There's a lot of buzz going around about the show in general, but prior to it coming out, wow, getting too excited here. Prior to it coming out, I hadn't heard a lot about disability being included or incorporated into this season, but there's been some chatter and some talk about it since it's been released. So I noticed it right away as I was watching it, and then I've been doing some research and digging into more of the behind the scenes aspect of that, the actors, who are they, are they disabled actors playing disabled characters, et cetera, et cetera. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Katherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I was going to say, it's great to see you, but I can't physically see you. <laughs> it's great to feel your presence. Thanks for being here. I am going to be talking today about disability representation on Bridgerton, this latest season, season three. This video is dropping the day before the last half of season three comes out, so that's very exciting, and we will potentially have more to talk about. I'm sure we'll have more to talk about after the last half drops, but we're gonna talk about the disability representation that's reflected in the first four episodes breaking that down into three different parts today. So first, we're gonna talk about British Sign Language and deaf actors being portrayed on television. I don't know why I just stated that as like, as television being portrayed on season three of Bridgerton on Netflix. The second thing that we're going to be talking about is a human in a wheelchair being part of this show. And then the last piece is that we're gonna be talking about the speculation that two of the characters may be autistic. So those are the three things that we're gonna to cover today. If I missed any, if there are any that you noted that I have not, please put those down in the comments below and we're gonna get started. Bridgerton, I don't need to introduce it. You know what it is. If you're here watching this video, you definitely know what it is. There's a good chance you know more about the show than I do. But I did start watching it back when it first released, 2020 pandemic. We were all super thirsty for a lot of different things so season one fulfilled many different needs and captured the attention and the hearts of many many people myself included season two came out last year maybe i'm losing track of time or maybe the year before the writer's strikes i know delayed the third season which has just come out this past month and there's been a lot of anticipation and eagerness around that and something that wasn't, you know, there's a lot of buzz going around. A bee pun for anyone who watches Bridgerton. There's a lot of buzz going around about the show in general, but prior to it coming out, wow, getting too excited here. Prior to it coming out, I hadn't heard a lot about disability being included or incorporated into this season, but there's been some chatter and some talk about it since it's been released. So I noticed it right away as I was watching it, and then I've been doing some research and digging into more of the behind the scenes aspect of that, the actors, who are they? Are they disabled actors playing disabled characters, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna dive into that today. Starting with the very first disability representation that you see on the show is in the very first episode. There are two characters who are using British Sign Language, so BSL, American Sign Language, ASL, British Sign Language, BSL, during the scene where the young women are coming out to society, they're being paraded in front of the queen, the queen is picking potentially the diamond of the season, etc. One of the young ladies, she turns to her mother and they communicate in British Sign Language. It's pretty short, but it was something that caught my eye and my attention when I saw it. And I was like, that's really cool. I don't see that happen in TV very often, especially, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit more later, in a way where it was just part of the scene, it was part of the script. There was no additional attention that was drawn towards it. It was presented in a very normalized way, which I think is amazing. It played out very much like 
There are people in this world, in this scene, who speak English. There are people in this world, in this scene, who are going to use British Sign Language and that that's just part of life and communication. And I really appreciated that. Some of the digging that I did today was to find out if the actors who were playing those two roles and using British Sign Language, if they were deaf. One of them is and one of them I believe is not, although there wasn't a lot of information about the actress who plays the daughter. The actress who plays the mother is deaf. She's a deaf actress. She has her own website and page and gives a little bit of information there about being born into a deaf family, becoming deaf in both ears when she was a teenager. And then I believe that the actress who plays her daughter, the best information that I could find, again, there wasn't a lot, is that she is not deaf, but has been trained in British Sign Language. So still something that she is comfortable and is equipped to do. So that is the one note there. Another thing to note, just in case you're curious and because this is what this channel is about, is talking about disability integration in our world and in our workplaces. We'll come back in a second as to why I'm qualified to do that. But British Sign Language, American Sign Language, they're not the same thing. Sign language, if you're not very familiar with it, there are different regions and dialects. There are different versions of sign language and it's the same as having different languages. So even though you might have French sign language, British sign language, American sign language, etc., it may feel like, oh, because they're all sign language, if you understand one, you would understand another. It's the same way with any language. French is different than English is different than Spanish is different than German, etc. But even with sign language in English speaking countries, their sign languages are still different. So someone who speaks ASL or uses ASL would not necessarily understand British Sign Language and vice versa. And one of the key differences between those two is that American Sign Language, you use one hand when you're finger spelling and British Sign Language, you use both of your hands. So just a couple fun facts there. Our second moment of disability representation in Bridgerton season th th three, is in episodes two and three. I'm hoping that this character comes back in the latter half of the show as well, because I really enjoyed him. Lord Remington, yep, that's right, Lord Remington, I wanna make sure I said that right, who is a character that uses a wheelchair. He's in a couple of the different episodes. Same note on this inclusion of his character as with deaf characters earlier in the show. I loved how normalized it was. There wasn't anything said about him using a wheelchair. There wasn't any comment about him having a disability or that it was unusual that someone with a disability was at a ball or that's part of society. Like all of that, the way that all the interactions went in the scene showed that him being there was normal, is normal. And I think that is fantastic because that, even though that is real life, <laughs> right? Humans with disabilities make up a quarter of the population. We see and encounter humans with disabilities on a daily basis. They're part of our world. They're part of our society. Disabled humans are part of our workplaces, but they aren't represented very frequently in media and in television. And oftentimes when they are, it's very highlighted and it's outside of the norm it's unusual, it's different, etc. And so I really appreciated that the way that it was included presented humans with disabilities and without disabilities interacting in the same ways, in the same scenarios, at the same social events, etc. I did a little bit of research on the actor. His name is Zach Ford Williams. See me clamp down at my hoover there just to remember that I said it right. Zach is an actor with cerebral palsy. He does use a wheelchair sometimes, although it doesn't seem like always in his personal life. He oftentimes plays or represents humans with disabilities in theater, on television. I appreciate, and this is where another shout out to Bridgerton and the creators and producers for not only including disability within the show, but hiring disabled actors to play those parts as well. I think that that's the way that it should be, but that's not the way that it always is. And so I am grateful that the representation is there and that disabled humans were the ones who are getting hired for the parts as well. The last thing that I'll note about him, because I do think it's important, is the way that his character is written and then also portrayed. He's just really captivating as a human, attractive, charming, witty, kind, 
sensitive, smart, and it may feel silly that I'm pointing out all of those things, but again, I don't think that humans with disabilities are always portrayed that way on television. They can sometimes be very one-dimensional or the disability is really highlighted over their personality or their humanity, or a person with a disability is regarded as an oddball or as someone who's maybe socially awkward or weird or someone that you would pity or that you would think less of. And so I really liked the way, again, the character was written. You got to experience kind of the fullness of who someone is and also just enjoy that character. And it didn't have anything to do with disability. It had everything to do with who he was as a person. And he also happens to be disabled and be in a wheelchair. Change and his teammates, your keyword for this week is pollen. So there's speculation that two of the characters on this show or in this season may be autistic. This is speculative. So we're kind of going to talk a little bit about that from my perspective, but then also what other people on the internet are saying. Francesca, who's one of the Bridgertons, and then her love interest, John, I forget his last name. There's ideas and kind of talk going around that both of them may have autism. A lot of the reading that I was doing was describing it as being autistic coded, which wasn't actually an expression that I was familiar with. So I looked that one up. If you also were not familiar with this as a term, autistic coded or autistic coding is when a character is portrayed with autistic traits, but it's not expressly stated or verbally stated that they are autistic. So you may draw the conclusion that they are. A lot of times this is within autistic communities where autistic humans are rooting for that character and thinking or hoping that they are autistic and that that representation is there, but a diagnosis or disclosure isn't fully given around autism. That being said, with these two characters, Francesca Bridgerton and John Sterling, they're thought to both potentially have autism or be autistic depending on if we're using person first or identity first language here. We'll start with my perspective. I did not necessarily pick up on that with Francesca. I thought potentially with the way that John was played and portrayed that he could be autistic. And this is where I feel like things get a little bit of a gray area for me. I would love for these characters to be autistic and for autistic representation to be part of the show and again done in a very normalized way. I do think that there is a difference between autistic humans watching TV and picking up on autistic coding and being like I'm speculating or I'm guessing that that character might be autistic versus a non-autistic human doing the same thing. And a lot of the comments that I was reading online, I was like, I'm not sure if this is coming from the perspective of someone with autism or not, because that's not clear necessarily in just a Twitter thread or an X thread and, you know, or an Instagram snippet. But a lot of the things that people were picking up on as autistic traits, I do think fall under stereotypical autistic traits. That's where I think it can get a little bit dicey, especially with non-autistic humans doing that speculation, is that it can fall into very narrow categories. And that doesn't always apply to every person with autism. And I see this a lot when we do workshops here, that there has started to become more awareness and understanding around autism as a culture and a society, but I think that that understanding is still pretty narrow. And a lot of times autistic humans still get pretty pigeonholed in terms of what autism looks like or how it presents. And it's going to present very differently in every human because every human is different. So stating things like, there seems to be a lack of interest in social engagements, prefer to sit quietly instead of engage in conversation, fascination with music, abruptly walking away from a conversation, things like that being cited as, oh, these are signs of autism. They could be, they also could not be. So that's where I feel a little bit torn between the pro, like, yes, I want the representation. And yes, I think it would be great if these characters were autistic. And that is something that's being portrayed and talked about on television. Like, I don't want that to be written out of anything because autism representation is important. And also I think there's more nuance to it than what is necessarily being discussed on the internet right now. We can sometimes further a set of ideas or qualities 
around a disability by perpetuating the same ones over and over again and failing to see more of the nuance that could exist. So I have complicated feelings about it. If you also have complicated feelings about it, or if you don't, if you have very straight line feelings about it and you wanna list those below, I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts, but those are mine. And as far as I can tell from doing research about the two actors, neither one of them are autistic, which feels like based on the other casting choices in the show that a deaf person is being played by a deaf actor, a person in a wheelchair is being played by a person with cerebral palsy who uses a wheelchair. Like there's consistency in hiring people with disabilities to play those disabled roles. Whereas if Francesca and John are both autistic and meant to be portrayed that way, it feels likely that the producers and the directors would or could have hired autistic actors to play those parts to stay consistent or congruent with the representation that they'd already set and the inclusion that they'd already set. So that's a thought, but again, they're just my thoughts. This is really just sitting around chatting about the show or an aspect of the show. Part of me was thinking as I was doing this video, I was like, there are so many things that we could be talking about about this show. There are a lot of things that people are talking about about this show, namely the carriage scene <laughs> at the end of the fourth episode. And I was like, am I disappointed that I'm gonna come on and I'm gonna talk about inclusion instead of like the spicy romance? I was like, no, I'm not disappointed but it also feels like we are just talking about one very specific thing here. There's obviously a lot more to, to the show and to the story that we could be talking about, but it's not necessarily what this channel is about. That being said, hi, <laughs> my name's Catherine. I'm a disability integration coach. I meant to say that like way back towards the beginning and I totally forgot to. What does that mean though? And why do I do this work? I have spent the past six years starting and then sustaining a business, a restaurant called Shea Jeunesse in Greensboro, North Carolina. We have an integrated hiring model, so about 50% of our staff are disabled and 50% are non-disabled. And we are passionate as a team about changing the way that our world views and employs people with disabilities. This channel is one of the avenues where we do that. It is coming from the perspective of myself, who is a non-disabled person, who has been tackling her bias around disability for my whole life, but have been doing that in a very concentrated way over the past eight years, I think. I put that into practice on a daily basis through my work. I do a lot of observing, a lot of research, a lot of talking, a lot of internal processing. I'm fully immersed <laughs> in the world and the, and the realm of disability integration and what that actually looks like for disabled humans to belong in our world and in our work. So that's a little bit about who I am, why I talk about the things that I do. My hope is that if you have a disability or you don't, that you find value in this channel and that it provides a community and a space for people to engage in conversations or thinking that maybe they haven't otherwise or haven't necessarily felt safe to. So I do challenge us to think, I challenge myself to think, I challenge us to feel and to sit with our feelings and to be curious about them, but hopefully to do that in a way that is kind and that's compassionate and gentle. My goal is to break down barriers and to provide understanding and connection because I'm passionate about belonging and about humans, not just belonging because I think that as a human, you do have the inherent right of belonging in our world, but that you feel feel like you belong and that's not always the same thing and that's not always experienced so that's what I am passionate about that's why I am here why are you here I would love to hear if you would like to drop that down in the comments below I've already asked you to drop like a bajillion other things but I do like to hear from you I'm thankful that you're here thanks for being part of my business my community my conversational circle it's an honor to have you here and we'll catch you next week.